hello, I'm yours. We've met before. <laughs> um, now for something completely different. Um, nothing related to GitLab apart from, well, that's where I am on GitLab. This is all, and that's, oh, that's where the package is hosted as well, obviously. Um, right now, I want to talk to you about uh, a new package that I made. Well, I'm saying new. We'll, we'll get to that in a bit. Um, but it's for, it's a package that's meant to be able to, to make it easier to declaratively impose constraints upon values. Well, done and talk. <laughs> so some motivations and a, bit, and a tiny bit of history. So this package has been something that's been on my mind for I don't even know how long anymore. It's, I've wanted to write this for a long time. It's still not done, unfortunately. Um, and I finally got started in, on an actual implement. So I've been wanting to talk about this at JuliaCon for, I don't know, since 2018, probably. <laughs> um, finally got started on in 2021, uh, December. Um, been building some prototypes on top of it. Um, and it's in general as of an hour ago. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So there will be a bit of focus on, on, on web development because that tends to be what I do. I think in general it holds a bit more, it's a bit more generally applicable, but so don't be you know, put off by the focus on JSON and stuff like that. Um, so when, you're, when I'm building applications with separate front end and back ends, I typically require a lot of duplications, right? A duplicate, I have, I have constraints on my on, on code in my back end or on types on my back end, then I need to replicate that in the front end because my, I want my inputs to have like validation and stuff like that. It's just annoying. Um, I need to copy data structures around, uh, impose validations on those construction uh, on those structures, etc. Now, obviously, we have tools like like JSON schema, right? Which which make that which are technology independent ways of describing structure on on data, um, describing constraints on whatever fields are in there, on on elements of arrays, stuff like that. Uh, this is something that gets used in a higher level. Right, if, if for us that don't know, right, Open API is a super, is sort of a superset of, of JSON schema. Uh, there's this other cool thing that I recently found called Async API. You have GraphQL. There's you know tons of these things, uh, and they're also, as I said, right, not necessarily specific to JSON. Now, many of for for these types of things, there, we have quite a few solutions in our ecosystem to read these specifications. But I have one big problem. <laughs> I don't want to write them. I'm not sure if anyone has ever written an open API spec by hand. It's sadness inducing. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really make you it doesn't really make you happy. Plus, in a lot of cases, then when you have that spec, you can generate it, but you still need to fill out the handlers anyway. So what I'd rather do when I'm writing an HTTP server, uh, I write my handlers, I have my writer, router that has like 95% of all the information that I need. What if I could just run some code on it? get the spec out that I can then send over to my front end. Um, spoiler alert, that, that's, not in this, that's not in this talk, but you can do it, I've, I've done it. Um, enter, oh yeah, well, but mo a lot of the metadata we need for that is already available, but not everything, so enter value constraints. So what is value constraints? Uh, it's a framework, I call everything a framework, so, or a platform, it depends on what level it's, on, it's at, uh, for declaratively specifying constraints and applying them to values. Well, what gave it away in the title? Uh, so what does it give you? Uh, it gives us currently a, a standard library of some, some very common constraints, right? Think minimum, maximum, multiple of, needs to be in this set, needs to be of that type, blah, 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 blah. Um, one thing I personally find really important is it gives you nice error messages. Um, instead of, you know, assert, failed, like, okay, and, and then what? <laughs> I don't know what to do with that. Um, you can obviously, right, you can have compound constraints. You can do things like, you know, I want all of these constraints to be true. I want one of them be, to be true. I want exactly five out of six of these to be true. You can do all sorts of stuff. Um, when we're talking about these open API specs and these async specs and JSON schemas, they need to be introspectable because if they're introspectable, that means I can generate these specifications. Um, this is typically, this basically, this is the, the core reason for, for doing this. Um, they're serializable and deserializable, uh, typically through struct types, which is an awesome package, which primarily integrates with JSON. I'm hoping it also integrates with the new version of JSON, which is not JSON 4, I, I don't know. And it's fast, right, when you're evaluating it. Um, this was a major stumbling block in the beginning, uh, so I actually have a bunch of benchmarks. If you look at the repository, there's a bunch of benchmarks in there to make sure that it's actually as fast as if you would be writing like regular function calls. Uh, there's no difference not in allocations, not in speed, it's just the exact same thing. Um, 
And what I also like is that they are, right, once you have written down one of those constraints, they're actually reusable. You can just apply them later to different, uh, oh, I'm making good time on this one. Ooh, maybe I'll go back to the other talk. <laughs> um, so, right, so you can, you can, they're also shareable in this case, right? So you, if you have a, a specific type of constraint that you want to apply to multiple values across the system that you have, you can, you just store them in a, in a variable and then you reuse them across where you, wherever you need them. So, Let's, let's take a look at what it looks like. Um, everything has capitals because they're constructors. Fight me, I guess. <laughs> um, so one of, one, right, one of the things that is in the, in, the, in the common library or in the standard library is, is minimum. So we stick it into a, a variable and then we can call that thing with whatever value we want and it will tell us whether it's valid or, new, or not. Right, 10 is more than five, one is not. Um, now this is, right, that, approach can't error, right? It, it's just, it just tells you true or false. So we can also call is valid on these and then pass the value as a second argument to that, um, which still does the same thing if by default, but if you pass fatal, it errors. And look, nice error message. It actually is very friendly and says three should be larger than or equal to five. Um, as I said, the same thing we can do for compound um, constraints. So if I add a second one, call it multiple of five, I combine them and say I want all of these to be true, I can call is valid minimum and multiple 10, well, apparently that is. Um, and again, if it's not, nice error messages. <laughs> Ooh, where, is it, where did the N come from? It's not supposed to be there. Um, so what you might notice is that actually right, it, it even pulls out the one that it's not valid and then it's, it's nice, this took a lot, took way, much, way too much effort. Um, and in this case, right, neither one of them are true. Uh, so it actually says that like one out of these two constraints should have been true and, it, and one of them, and they're not. Um, to be able to work with validations on, on primitive types, right, you can't really change them or validate them that easily. Uh, I have, or especially if you want to change them over time, right, which is the thing if you have like a, an integer in your REST API somewhere and you want to validate it every time it gets updated. Um, I've added a very simple container type. You just stick a, stick a, a number in there, or stick a value in there, st stick your constraints in there. Um, when you try to construct it, well, if it's not true, it, it errors. Um, you can set this, that same fatal flag to false, then it actually just goes through just fine, but as soon as you call as valid on it, it goes nope. You can push new values into it, like using the, the useful, uh, what is it? I always call it dereferencing, it's, it's not, but you can also just write to the value field, same thing happens. Um, yeah, those are all the demos that I have. Some people might, you know, I guess you can think, well, aren't there similar efforts? Well, yeah, um, honestly, I haven't looked too deeply into them. <laughs> I just wanted to write this thing. Uh, right, you have obviously, there's Julia constraints and, and, and Jump uses constraints, but at least in my, or at least as far as I know, they serve a slightly different purpose, so I'm not sure how, I, I briefly looked at them and it didn't jump out at me like, oh, I can do this thing that I want with them. Um, there is another package by someone I used to work with, uh, designed by contract, uh, which is actually pretty neat. It's for uh, putting contracts on method signatures, um, which I kind of like, and I think we could actually do it with this. So this is my roadmap. Uh, documentation, I'm sorry. It's, uh, this, this, this talk serves as a documentation for now. Um, some things I would like to implement, come help me hack on it tomorrow if you want to, um, is uh, constraint structs, I think would be a cool idea. Same thing for constra constraint methods and then being able to actually take these value, right? If you have a bunch of these composed constraints, turn them into schemas. I, I have some prototypes for it, but it's not in the package right now. But just some quick syntax. This is what I think the constraint structs stuff could look like, right? So we'll have a, uh, a macro that extracts this additional type information out and then you just get your struct back and then we'll automatically generate like the set property and, and stuff like that. Methods, not sure yet. This looks a bit overwhelming, but it, yeah, nicely, it doesn't look half bad. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you. And especially to everybody who's listened to me drone on about this for years and years and years.